I, I came to see you while you were there. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> nice. It, it, the on the last leg. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is some shit. Some shit that was interrupted my story, man. I know, dude. I'll, I'll roll too. Guess it worked out. Right. I'll fuck with it later. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got some work done by you. Yeah. But it there's like there's like six or seven in there, and it um. Shit. Anyway, all right. That comment was useless. You know, I'll do some chicory roots. Chicory. Sounds like a something off a of Pokemon. Yeah. You chicory mon? Yeah. Well, let's do chicken, chicken, chicken mon. A Digimon. I'm a Digimon. All right, dude. Here we are again. R number four. Number four. I think this is our fourth one. I wouldn't know. I wrote down the ones you were on so I can tell people to go check them out. Cool. What is up, everybody? This is Joe Adams, and welcome to the Relentless Pursuit Podcast. What we do on this podcast is bringing guests from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life, to share their journey and everything along the way that led them to where they're at today. We're here to make an impact, and that is what we do. So if that is for you, check it out. Like subscribe, all those wonderful things. And if that is not for you, I don't know what your problem is, but you need to jump on board today. That was pretty smooth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Without <laughs> further ado, for ep the fourth episode he's been featured on, the one and only muscle medic, Jesse Mays. Ridiculous. <laughs> what's up man what's up buddy so jesse uh for those of you just now jumping on board jesse and i go back some years we've had a lot of trials and tribulations and great times and wonderful times and now he's in hq in this building doing his thing with the muscle medic changing lives healing people because yeah. that's what he does and um for those of you you know you like this episode you like what jesse's about you can find him on episode number one of this podcast. So the fir very first episode of the Real Love Street podcast, Jesse's the guest. And then episode number 15, episode number 40, and then now this will be episode number 113. So you've been doing some work. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of podcasts happening. Hell yeah. So, and I think that's all of them. Maybe one more in there. I don't know. From what I saw on the list, that's where you're at, but... Welcome back, bro. Yeah, man, that first one it has got to be so. It was already painful when I was at forty to look back, and now it's got to be. Just, oh man, you even like look a uh, like world different. I know. Me too. I'm I'm not the same person. Yeah, same. Yeah, and that's the crazy part about like seeing the evolution about like just. I mean, it's it's cool that we have these, right? So we can look back, and it's nuts though. Yeah, I'm just like, damn, I'm old. I look old now. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of crazy thinking back on episode number one together. It was in my garage, mm. my home gym at my old house, you know, not too long after my wreck, probably a couple of years, a year or so. And, uh, and then, you know, I was in a totally different position in life. And now here we are mm. several years later. And because I took a break of recording after that, after mm. like the first three episodes, cause I moved out of that house and here we are, man. And like, I don't know, you've had a lot of changes. You're a totally different person. I am. And I have a family and this business has changed. And it's just been crazy, man. The evolution of us. And we even had a falling out there for a little bit. And uh, we circled back around and here we are. You good? You about to cry? Yeah. You Get look all emotional and weepy. You look like you took a moment. No. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, often, I often do talk about our friendship because it's really cool of an example of um, 
kind of what we were just talking about before we started this accountability and all kinds of other things because it's like you gotta you gotta have people you grow with and i think since that's something me and you value so heavily probably more than everybody else around us that's why it works you know you know what's cool is like we're so different and which is why we probably butted heads as many times as we have like i'd say out of my friends like we butted heads the most yeah but at the same time we're so similar like in all the key ways yeah and we understand growth and we just grow in our own ways right like we have to go through different things in life that have led us to where we're at now and we're still on a growing i mean you're forever growing right but uh we've had to just find our way our own way but we've done it congruently at the same time mm-hmm. it's been cool i'm also just a little shit so a little <laughs> shit what do you mean <clears throat> i mean i'm an asshole yeah, yeah, in a good way though. Yeah, but I'm annoying. I know that. God, I know. <laughs> you are too. <laughs> I know. Let's talk about the cleaning list. Why don't we? No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's like motherfucker. Oh, you think this funny? Yeah, I mean, I do. I love it. Fucking shit. It's a little bit. Here I'm scrubbing <laughs> toilets and shit. I'm like, this. No one else is cleaning. <laughs> just getting all fucking freaked out. But that's why, because you're like, <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm like, I'll just do it all then. I get just scrub, scrub, scrub. <laughs> no, anyway. I'm just kidding, man. I just, uh, honestly, I don't mind doing those things, but, you know, at the same time, yeah. It's like, oh, extra shit, but you're the best, dude. I, I love our friendship, man. I, I I appreciate all the times, and, uh, you know, right now we're, like, at the, I think we're the closest wavelength we've ever been. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. I've had to work through some things recently, big time, mm-hmm. you know? You know, I've talked about that, just being, uh, been very vulnerable, vulnerable about my health and, like, what's been going on with me as far as like what I define as success and what I define as balance because balance you're not supposed to have as an entrepreneur, if you want to succeed, right? All those things. And we'll talk on a lot of that. I think that will be some good subjects we can dive into, but first we know your story. Well, we know a lot of it. We got a compilation of those things, Mm -hmm. you know, feel free to touch on anything you want to that's happened since episode 40, I guess, if you could reflect on it really. Um, but what we want to dive into is what it is that you do, because, you know, I even have a hard time telling people, I just tell people you're a healer, you know, and people, mm-hmm. most people are like, what the fuck does that even mean? I was like, well, it doesn't massage therapy. So like, as far as the general population is concerned, you're a massage therapist. Mm-hmm. That's really good because that's how I definitely emphasize it. Right. But like, explain it further. Take it another level, dude. Yeah. What does, what is the muscle medic, Jesse? Um, even that, you know, for myself is, has always been hard to explain, but generally speaking, I mean, it's, um, everything that you could imagine in the healing field. And when I say everything, I mean, everything that I could possibly touch on. Um, it's about bringing coherency into it. It's about, and, and what I mean is that you'd have to understand the body in in general to understand that most of our ailments and illnesses are out of, um, being discoherent, being disharmonious, like I, something's not working in tune with another thing. Mm. And so what I do, um, whether it be tissues, muscles, um, somebody's brain, you know, talks, emotions, um, I bring things back into coherency the best that I can. Yeah. And uh, that usually takes somebody going on a journey with me, which is why the muscle medic has become very, I guess, selective. Um we're really not, or really not selective, but generally speaking, like, I mean, for me to be able to do any bit of the work that I do, yeah. you got to want to get better. You got to want to give a shit. And if you, if you don't, if you don't care about your own health and you don't care about, um, you know, whatever it is that you're going through and truly want to make a change, then, you know, I just, you know, I'm probably not the best fit and that's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah. but I will go the extra mile for anyone. So when people hear the muscle medic today, I think um, obviously there's the vast majority of people who don't know it. And then there's a lot of people in this town that genuinely understand that that dude will go out of his way to make sure you're good. Yeah. And I'm really proud of that. Um, and, and in all honesty, that comes full circle back to, you know, I had to become the thing that I was searching for Mm -hmm. because in general uh, or in the beginning, I 
was so messed up in so many different ways, m- way more ways than I even knew about. But like just the, the one thing that I wanted fixed was my back. Um, and I mean, it was destroyed. My, um, both my sacroiliac ligaments were torn up. My, uh, S1, L5, L5, L4, L4, L3 discs were like blown out, destroyed. I was, I started this business crippled actually, um, had three weight belts around my waist when I started. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, you can ask anybody that I went to massage school with and while everybody was sitting in desks, I was over on the side bent over a table with my fists in my stomach because it was the only thing that would make the pain bearable enough for me to pay attention. Damn. Yeah. And, um, you know, the the whole point of me going down this journey was to figure myself out. Um, very much like the very beginning when I started personal training. Um, became a personal trainer when I was 18, uh, right as soon as I stepped in the door of the Marine Corps. And uh, uh, <laughs> the only reason I did it, the only reason I took a, it was ACE. Uh, the only reason I did it was because I wanted to figure out, I was like, well, if I do this, I'll know everything about fat loss. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was, that was, yeah, no. And so went through that and then quickly got trainers and I never really got a trainer to uh, necessarily go on the journey they wanted to. I, went, I always got trainers to pick their brains and learn from them. And um, that's been similar because I, I recognized when I got into the field of, in this field, I recognized that that same concept was true. I just needed to find other practitioners, other healers. Yeah. Because a true healer, you know, you got professions, you got massage therapy, you got physical therapy, you got all this stuff. And then a true healer is someone who has remedied something inside of themselves and know about it through experience. Yeah. So, and that's uh, the same concept. That's the biggest concept with shamans, right? Shamans, they say the only difference between um, a sick person and a shaman is that um, a shaman, you know, falls in the deep, dark hole and gets himself out. Whereas a sick person falls in a hole and needs a shaman to get them out. Mm. And so um, that's kind of the concept here. Yeah. So mostly like what you're saying is honestly to, to, to be the ultimate of whether it's shaman or speaking to people, whatever, it's just experience first and foremost. Yes. Yeah. You can gain all the knowledge through books and whatnot, but experience is going to make you the greatest teacher. Exactly. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. And you know, that's how I'll look at it with things. I mean, obviously with it, that applies to almost anything too, especially in the health world, you know, training people. Yeah. Everybody can, anybody can go get a certification, but like you said, you didn't learn all about fat loss and it's still something you can mm-hmm. learn more and more about. It never stops really. Um, I'm sure as a shaman, you don't ever really have all the answers. You're still on a growing path. But, um, you know, even me wanting to talk to people and coach people as far as the mental health side of things go, you know, two years ago before, like, I started doing this, even if I had about all the education, it would have been a lot more difficult than, like, actually having all the conversations with people. But also, along the journey – really working going internally and uh, working on myself along that process. Right. Can just only make you the best at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now you've seemed to have fine tuned what you do. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Big time. So what are some of the different things that you do do under that umbrella? Like you said, you, you do the manual therapy, right? The massage and stuff like that. And if what you said kind of at the beginning is someone's, not knocking anybody if they're just looking for like a really good massage therapist well you're not the guy because you offer more than that Mm -hmm. is that what you're trying to get at i mean yeah you are the guy but like you're going to bring them bring something else to the table you know and some people don't they they don't want that right they They they, just want the massage that's something i've I've had to keep in mind and that's kind of the 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 whole shebango is that like I, i you know i always have the offer open on the table and and that's uh we actually just do video calls now so people um schedule a video call with me their first session and uh just to make sure that it's it's good with them and it's good with me you know it's like i explain everything i do uh, i let people know you know when you come in here it's it's mental it's physical it's emotional it's spiritual and um a lot of people don't know what that means so uh you know i try to explain it the best i can but it's just the umbrella of understanding that i've come to is that when we finally start to understand about the body we are understanding that it's all internally connected and that if you could imagine it like a big puzzle piece that it's it's a big puzzle and and there's 
many jumbled pieces, but unfortunately every piece is somehow tethered together and it's not just it's not just one big flat 2D piece. Yeah. It's it's a four stage piece of the, you know, the physical, the emotional, the mental, the spiritual. And we have to not just say, oh hey, that piece is out and that piece has to go here. Well, that piece might be tethered to yeah. twenty other pieces and it may not have any room to get there. Yeah. Right? Because it's too tight. Yeah. And so the act that I do is that when people come in, I'm untethering things. I'm untethering the mind. I'm making it easier. I'm untethering the emotions. I'm allowing the expression. I'm untethering the tissues, literally, through my hands and, you know, breath work. And, yeah. um, you know, many other things. There's That's that's where the modalities are vast. But um, And then generally, spiritually, um, I think just one of my greatest passions is I think people can take the context of the word spiritual so many different ways, but yeah. the context for me, when I say, you know, this is spiritual work as well, is that you, whatever level of vigor you come in, you leave with more. Yeah. And that's, that's how I look at spiritual, you nice. know, like your intent for life, your per, your want to live, you know, regardless of what that is. Like I want people to leave my office understanding that there's more yeah Under of course understanding that they they there's not they have they feel like there's more in the tank they understand that there's more out there they have more ambition they have more passion just in general like that's something i really prioritize and really uh so it's almost about myself it's almost like soul work yeah because everybody regardless of what you believe in right yeah we all have a soul yeah. i think like most of us can agree upon that right yeah. regardless of the spiritual path right so you're just helping them evolve that yeah. right yeah i mean i really don't you're not care. like baptizing somebody right <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah no i really don't um you know i i don't really think anybody's version of spirituality matters because at the end of the day i, I try to i'm always trying to speak in languages that are understand across the board regardless of what you got going on yeah so um that's why you know me and you have talked about this so many times but you know it's for me it's you're a human and your human brain for the places I've been, your human brain can't even begin to comprehend what it is that's happening. Yeah. Because it's not in the format of a human brain. The human brain is in a format of a piece of the whole thing that's going on. Yeah. And so instead of trying to figure out, quote unquote, the truth, right? Let's just agree upon that. You have a living, living flesh, living tissue. It regenerates. One of the questions that I asked when I started my business or should I say when I got going with my business, it's always been the curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I break down tissue, I learned that basically I'm just moving things out of the way so that the body can regenerate. We know that when you get a cut, it regenerates. We know that when you break your bone, it just needs to be cast and left alone, it regenerates. What is doing the regeneration? So I went from understanding just anatomy in general, understanding the systems and got to, okay, cool. Blood flow. Okay, cool. Nutrients. These are the things that need to be delivered to, you know, get the regeneration. What's doing that. Right. And then I kept going and going and going. I got into cellular physiology and started understanding mitochondria and started understanding just how the energy of the body gets produced. Yeah. Okay, cool. What's doing that. Yeah. I started getting into physics and I started realizing that like, it's all based on, well, actually, then it was chemistry, and then it was physics. And the deeper I went, I realized that, like, these are just compounding layers of, like, your your biology, your anatomy and your physiology is based on your biology. Your biology is based on the chemistry, and the chemistry is based on the physics. Yeah. And it's, just, it's all the same science. It's just deeper. And so when I finally got to the, you know, what we call the atom, right, that led me into quantum physics. And essentially, at, at that tail end, it's just like, what is causing the regeneration? And that's where it's going to get to almost an unanswerable, uh, unanswerable form that we're just going to have to agree that it is what's ever, whatever is animating you right now. Yeah. Whatever is animating you, your mind, your neurons, whatever is animating your cells, your tissue. So then it became very clear to me after several trials and tribulations of my own life and my clients lives and everything that like, I'm not 
the healer. But I can get as close to that as possible if I can reconnect someone yeah. to that source of anima- animation. Yeah. If I can get someone to recognize that force inside of them that's animating them. Because that's the, that's the true healer. Yeah. Right. You're just kind of like the conduit to exactly. stimulate that, right? Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Well, how do you think people, so you said you had like the video calls kind of explaining what you do. Do you think you know, when you, when you explain this, does it tend to deter people or draw them in? No, I, I mean, I don't explain it nearly that deeply, but. Well, um, yeah, but you know, but, I guess when you give them yeah. kind of like, it's, you know, you give them, you sell them on, it's more than like just a massage, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess when you explain what you do. Man, it's been, it's been the most interesting <clears throat> journey because like my journey with my business is a hundred percent faith-based. It's not the hustler business. It's none of that shit. It's been a very interesting journey because, you know, I did a lot to upgrade myself, upgrade my techniques, my hands, my tissue works, uh, my tissue work, my, my abilities, my, um, my, my gizmos and gadgets that I have in the shop to be able to, you know, facilitate every format. So we have a lot of frequency work. We have yeah. a lot of different stuff. And, you know, I really didn't know what to expect because not only did I start doing video calls and, and made a boundary for myself that like, listen, like this is, you know, I got told by one of the greatest healers of all time, Jimmy Bluff, that he was like, dude, if you don't, if if you don't recognize your gifts and you don't work on your top end and you just keep doing like what you can do, what you know to do your bottom end, he's like, not only will you never be satisfied, but the training, the experience and the progression of that top end will vastly suffer and will never go anywhere until you prioritize what you can do at your best level, at your highest potential level. Man. And it was like, I mean, how do you argue with that? Yeah. You don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can connect with that with regarding everything I've been re- going through recently. Like I'm not doing the same thing as you, but still right. it just it goes back to like focusing, focusing on where you're the strongest, right? Yeah. And putting your prioritizing that and right now. That's like in my move is to like, all right, I've got going with what I need to succeed. Right. Or, or go to the next level. So like hone on in on that rather than like all the bottom end stuff that can, you know, you could take on later on down the road if you want to, but really like maximize your potential right. on the top part. Right. Right. Is that what he was kind of getting at? Yeah. Yeah. And so, but people respond pretty well when you, you know, kind of emphasize that then. So yeah. Like they come and, in. Well, what I was going to say was like, you know, I, I started doing that and I didn't know how it was going to gonna go because I raised my tra- prices vastly and we have these video calls, you know, and, inflation, dude. And <laughs> no, dude, it's, it's it's a hundred percent about me valuing myself and what I can do. Yeah. And so here I am, like honestly scared shitless. Like, fuck, man, we're about to do video calls. Like people used to just walk in. Now you have to do a video call. Right. And yeah. I, I'm like thinking about like just, you know, business flow and how things go. And it's just like, well, I already know that if someone had to do a video call, like they may not want to. And I raised my prices. That already deterred several people. And it was it was a wild experience that I just decided to, you know, I was like, you know what? I have to do this. I'm afraid of this. I have to do this because I'm afraid of this. And I had faith in it. And I set this intention that the universe would send exactly like who needs me yeah, and, and who I need too, because I'm learning from every single one of my clients. And so it has been the wildest experience to watch that unfold as to be honest, I have had nothing but like maybe 1% out of everybody who comes on. I have video calls often. We have at least three to five a week and it's crazy because those are big ticket sales. Yeah. But it's also reoccurring clients that keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. I have a massive reoccurring clientele. Yeah. I mean, I see a lot of the same faces all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool just because like, I mean, for me, like when I opened up, like I opened up because it, I would value the truth more than I valued my own feelings, but I was scared because I know that everything that I have to say is widely not only undervalued in society, but also just completely misheard and not understood and not because it's, they don't have the intelligence, but because it's, it's avoided because it's like kind of like what we were talking about shadow work. You know, a lot of times what I'm 
in order to fix the mental, the physical, the emotional, the, the physical all together and understand all those pieces, we kind of have to hit triggers. Well, a lot, of, and a lot of this stuff is very taboo. Yeah. You know, I talked about that with Hannah Cole. She was recently on here. Does a, a lot of similar stuff that you do, right? right? As far as the, uh, how she heals people. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were just talking about that, you know, it's just societally, people look at it differently, than, yeah. but you're like, she's obviously getting a great response and so are you. So y'all yeah. are doing it right. And I think, having that faith in yourself, like, yeah, you took the risk, right. To raise the prices and do the video t- calls. And like, that was all scary at first, but now you feel comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. And because of that, and because of the response you've gained, I'd imagine you're probably a lot more confident in your work now too. Yeah. Because people are, you're like, fuck yeah, dude, like people, this is, this is what it's all about because you followed through with taking that risk. Right. Yeah. That's really rad, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I had people offering to, like help paint my room and I had a problem with it and like that room? no no like at Olympus yeah like um because I was like I just felt like no I have to do it I have to do this yeah. and so but um I did let someone help but it's it's weird you know like when you I don't know it's, it, it almost you know sometimes it feels like it takes it away it takes away from you but that's just just that's whatever no, I get it. I mean, it's like, well, I had so many people, hey, someone will help you with the production. To the, and I was like, no, nah, dude, I got this shit. Yeah. It's just weird. Like, you kind of like, it's like, you want to take the help. Mm-hmm. But you're also like, no, nah, I've got to face this kind of like solo. Some of these things for a bit, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then there's a time to make shifts, right? Right. When it's just like, okay, like. There's no need to take it all solo now because you're kind of fucking yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like you're going to stunt your growth if you try to do it all. Like I know down the road, this is going to be, I'm not going to be able to just sit and edit all these episodes by myself. And I'm not going to want to run around in circles. Right. Doing all this, but I enjoy the, I enjoy what it takes, you know, to do the whole thing. And I really, it makes me like, I don't know. Is that, like you said, like you get, it's a pride thing. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you're just like proud of it, you know? So, yeah, I don't know. I think for any any <clears throat> business owner in the beginning, like you gotta, you have to fill that space with your entire energy alone first. I yeah. think many people don't with all the investments and all kinds of other shit. They have so much energy going into from so many different places that the actual business does blow up. But what is it? And so when you're you're an entrepreneur and you're doing your thing and you're like really pushing it and you're pushing the value of it and you're putting all of your energy in it. It's it's the only true way that you can have that creative out outburst of your all the inspiration that you have coming to life, or else it's just like like some kind of half ass Frankenstein of many different inspirations that may be clashing or whatever, you know. Dude, so I I, th- I think I think that's the thing is like actually getting the vision to come to life, your vision, not anybody else's. Oh, I know. It's like well, this podcast like eighty two episodes in, I had to go back to that. And it's had to become like my vision, but it's also like now it's found its identity. Like now I'm like, oh, I made the podcast. Like I've created an identity with it. Like it's a lot more specific. It looks different than anything else. It's like it's its own. And I could sit there and say, well, I had wished I had done that from the beginning. I was also sold on the idea that like I wasn't like it would just be too hard. And I'm like, well, it does it take a lot of time? But if you care about it enough, it's not you know, you can accomplish anything if you really give a shit. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, like, I mean, yeah, so there's a reason, like, you know, got to fucking go through that part of it 80-something episodes in. Yeah. But I'm also really glad. I mean, it makes me want to, like, bring a lot of these guests in again, you know, just to have, like, sit down and have a conversation with them and, you know, try, like, just see what it's... I mean, I feel like there's going to be have to be some refreshers. You Mm -hmm. know, I've had a lot of these conversations, like, a couple years ago, and it's like, well... There's been a lot of changes for that individual since then. Yeah. So let's touch base again. So I might have to circle around and uh, get some uh, sick of rounds. And just, oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Jesse. So you were talking about the muscle medic, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but what I want you to do. Real quick is just to tell us like what some of those methods are that you utilize in order to uh, to do this healing work. 
Okay. Um, yeah, man. So I'm a total fucking geek when it comes to like healing. And mm-hmm. I think that's very necessary for me to do what I do. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's, I, I have to explain it like this first, because if I prioritize one technique ever, even in sentence structure, it'd be a problem. Yeah. So I have learned a lot of cool techniques. I do have, and all these techniques have a basis that come from people. Um, shout out to Jimmy Bluff for giving me one of the coolest techniques in my tool bag. Um, you know, his uh, advanced muscle reconstruction technique is, you know, amazing. It truly is. It's, um, it's, it's life changing because it gave me the ability to truly uh, shift tissue gently. Yeah. And when you got an 85 year old lady on the table that can't move her neck, that's a huge deal. <laughs> yeah. That's massive, dude. That's it's, it's a, it's a massive deal to be able to handle that with doing very minimal damage. And really all you're doing is like unwinding it. I'll go into what exactly that is in a second. But the thing is, is that for me, you know, what I realized not only with that modality and several other modalities, but they are all just tools that are in a big, big, big tool bag. There's many people out there that have their way or, or bind to another person's way. And I've never been able to do that. I think that's just the, I think, you know, I I thought it was my bullheadedness for a while, but generally speaking, it's, it's me trying to pioneer something. And that's going to take never binding to any one way. Yeah. So, so with the modalities that I do, it's a massive, like what exactly I do, it's a massive, massive, massive collection of hundreds of different modalities that I've compiled together in like an assortment of tools for when to use what, for yeah. what course do I need, for what kind of clientele problem is going on, when do I use this or that. And so that's, um, you know, I use the advanced uh, muscle reconstruction technique a lot. Um, do I need to move closer? No, no, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Now ignore me when I do this stuff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the advanced muscle reconstruction by Jimmy bluff has been a godsend because it basically filled in every gap that I couldn't get to already. Yeah. But my own technique that I've developed is, um, I haven't really, I know there's very similar stuff out there. I just haven't seen anybody do it, but it's like my overall technique which is um, very, very, very long duration strokes with um, a lot of pressure. And it takes... <laughs> Sorry. I hate you. I, hate you. Um, I, 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 I don't know, man. It, <laughs> I just... You, I don't know. I get it, man. I get, <laughs> I get it, man. Being in this business, it is, it is what it is. Um, but when it... I need to give me a session. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, we can't do <laughs> okay. that. Um, the, all right, so when it comes into understand, all right, break. Fuck it, I can't. <laughs> Dude, I, all I did was smile. I know, and it fucked me up. <laughs> and I don't know, man, it's you, you know, I gotta. I know, man. Uh, <sighs> sorry. But at the same time, like, I have to take it really, really professionally because I can't have that shit. This has to be in there. Some of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll edit. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. At we can start it, back whenever. Just make it goddamn funny. <laughs> it will make it. Just got to be. It is good. To, <laughs> Sorry, guys. So that's on me. <clears throat> I'm being immature. <laughs> and uh, I apologize. I distracted Jesse. But he's explaining some serious stuff. And I just took it too far. So I will own that. And... Um, it's not too far. We're just normally idiots. <laughs> and, and, and like, I, you know, I also just being open about my business. Like I try my best to keep shit like really professional for the nature of it, just because it's a sacredness of it. Yeah. And so, of like, course, not to say there's not like jokes outside of that, but yeah, we just, it's just <laughs> our dialogue, man. Yeah. Shit. So it's all right. We take the darkest, we even take the darkest stuff and make it some kind of joke, but that's just, you know, 
I mean, that's mostly what her jokes are. It's yeah. Extremely dark. We owe that to the military. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. No, we're just fucked up. Yeah. That too. To be honest. So. <laughs> it's fu- we needed a fucking back to icebreaker. It. <laughs> back to All right. It. So. What was I talking about? Your t- the long duration pressure strokes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, dude, that's what you said. I'm just, I know. Okay. <laughs> I won't freaking smile. I will look away. You can, like, look at the... Sorry. Damn it, man. I fucked things up. <laughs> dude, we just need to press pause. We just need to press pause and then... Re- okay. Now we got this. All right. So, my modality has to do with the nervous system and trying my best to follow it. There's a lot of different, there's a lot of different types of people. And what I've learned is that your nervous system is your personality. Yeah. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that because people are already like from a science perspective, what the fuck, but they're also going to be, um, totally ignorant to what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is that I find that the different types of people and how you are as a person means it basically correlates into how your nervous system is going to react to a certain pressure. Yeah. It's going to, how it's going to, whether you're more defensive, whether you're uh, more open, whether you're a little bit more, um, I don't know, like, you know, even, even drug addicts, right? Yeah. There's a massive, um, you know, kind of gapping feeling that I felt where it's like the body almost doesn't know how to react to anything, light pressure, heavy pressure, it doesn't matter. Interesting. So my modality has to do with long duration, um, basically holding, (laughs) I don't know how to explain this like thoroughly, but I'm basically holding the nerve in a way that it's never getting freaked out. And I'm following it. And when it starts to open, I go in further. When it starts to close, I back off. And I think generally speaking, every, every therapist is doing this, but I decided to take it to another level. Yeah. I mean, to the point to where it might take me like one stroke going down the tricep may actually take me five minutes and that's long. Yeah. And for me to just sit there and hold it with variable pressures. And so I think where it came into terms of like what really does make the muscle medic special, like the thing that I feel like I've developed is a personal thing with my hands where, I mean, I'm looking in pressure increments in like almost like one thousandths. Yeah. Like it's, it's wild dude. Cause it's just like the, the, the most tiny little aspect of varied pressure out may be enough. Cause you know, some people just let off Yeah, when it comes to like, uh, it's, it's, you know, this muscle group is clamping up. This is not responding. Some people back out yeah. t- totally. And I'm just moving just enough for it to respond positively and then follow back. You almost like are able to see what the nerve is telling you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the nerve whisperer. That's pretty cool. So, so, but that's, that's like my main thing that I'm using. And I mean, I can do that with my fingertips, especially I can do that with, you know, fingertips, hands, my fists, my elbows. It doesn't matter what it is. Like I've built the sensitivity around my body to be able to use anything really Yeah. to be able to follow this and get this thing to do what I need it to do, yeah. which it's weird, right? Because it's the same thing that I'm doing to the person, which is a conversation of safety, right? Yeah. This this nerve is, or this muscle, this muscle group that has nerves in it, right? I'm focusing on the the nerves that are contracting, and you know, if people don't know, like your nervous system is directly responsible for how, you know, the inflections in your body are reacting to any kind of discomfort or stimulus whatsoever, right? Yeah. So, I'm having this conversation usually with the person at the same time that I'm having the conversation with my hands to the nerves. That it's okay. Yeah. Right. And I, I'll, you know, it sounds weird when I say mental and emotional, but a lot of times we're not, you know, I'm not directly saying it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we're, it's, it's, it's some kind of conversation and or direction in which is ensuring that a person feels safe, which is going to translate into the nervous system. Mm-hmm. Just like my hands making the nervous system directly feel safe is going to translate into the personality. Nice. So it's a complete, like, um, immersion into safety. And so that's what I found by the corrective action that does not spark whatever the corrective action is, whether it be lighter, harder, whatever it is, that does not spark 
defensiveness. Yeah. Is what I use. And I, you know, this is, that, that's where it gets hard for me to put it in a format because every single person is different. And so if I find something is completely guarding mm-hmm. and, and not able to move, right? Yeah. Again, there's a lot of different modalities. I just don't look at things in modalities, but that's where, like, I move into breathing techniques. And then, you know, if, if the breathing techniques don't work, you know, it's like, I, it's not direct, like, one specific breathing technique. It's like I'm trying to use the nervous system. A lot of people may not know that the breath is the remote control for the nervous system. So when I have people take a deep inhale, deep exhale, the body and the nervous system, as you're exhaling, as you're pretty much letting and depressing the air out of your body, the nervous system is actually coming down a little bit. And as it comes down a little bit, those nerves open up. But that may only be one one thing out of the huge piece, right? So maybe this person needs like a visual guidance. So a lot of times I'm visually guiding people through meditation as well. Yeah. You know, it just depends on how bad it is. Yeah. Some people never have to even get there, but there's some serious cases that I deal with where we're breathing, we're doing visual techniques. We're, you know, revisiting, you know, certain childhood things while we're working on certain areas that are <laughs> majorly, um, <coughs> Majorly, majorly sensitive. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to basically, I guess this is a good way to put it. I always have a hard time explaining this stuff, I guess. Um, Imagine driving this massive ship that has so many different controls on it through a massive, massive storm. And the thing is that you can get through it if you just hit it right. If you, if you trigger the sails right, trigger the steering right, you know, if the crew's all working together, for the same purpose, mm. you can get through it. And so with all of my modalities and all the variables that go into play, what, how a person's thinking, how a person's feeling, um, what the physical body is feeling like, you know, the smells in the room, the tone of my voice, the temperature in the room, you know, all of these things, whether a person feels hurt or not. Yeah. All of these things are variables in, in this crew driving this ship to get from point A to point B. Okay. And so... It's not just like you ask about my modalities and I know I'm kind of getting off topic in a, in a way because it's always been really a big struggle for me to directly explain this. But this is kind of me finding the words in the present moment. Yeah. You're like a man of action. Like you, yeah. you just apply it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and I, I've always wanted to be able to express it really well. But yes, it's a, it's a, it's a total application that. I mean, it would take a book to truly explain what I'm doing. Yeah, which maybe one day I'll write a book. Yeah, I probably should. Yeah, but it when you're when you understand that at, at the core principle, the 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 watered down version is the the nervous system is a personality, and the personality is a nervous system. And so if you if you gather that, then you even though someone may be telling me something very different, if I got my hands on you, I know exactly what's going on. So it's not lying to me. Of course. So the individual is this ship. And you're just trying to guide the crew and the captain and every other aspect of it, regardless of the storm, to work in synchronicity together. Yes. And so there's a lot of different pieces mm-hmm. in order to make that happen. Yes. But it's possible. Yes. And then you get through the other side. Yes. Nice. Yeah. I love it, dude. So what would you say to like a naysayer? You know, you talk about the, you know, because you're going to get people that may be like, oh, hey, this dude's like, oh, it's crazy with the fingers and the nerves. Like, what would you say to somebody that totally tries to say that's come prove me wrong? Oh, there we go, dude. <laughs> come, uh, come, Murfreesboro. come try it out because, like, that's the thing yeah. is, like, there's, there's been how my brain works is it's so many different associations of information. I've read so much shit out there. And I'm not here to say it's wrong or right because I've tried it all. Yeah. And I know what works and what doesn't work. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And that's for me. And so I've created uh, a modality out of thousands of modalities yeah. that are coming into this connection, you know, that is is just the variables of, of the body. It's really just understanding anatomy. Like, you know, when I started to understand biomechanics, it was like, I don't feel like I'm getting enough information. Yeah. I started searching, 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 detailed breakdown, and then... It, it wasn't until, like, I just 
threw all the information off the table about mm-hmm. what people had to educate directly about biomechanics. I was like, I'm going to go back and remap this fucking body. I'm going to learn the bones. I'm going to learn the muscles, how they're connected. And then from this vantage point of me just understanding, you know, exactly how the nerve contracts the muscle, exactly how the muscle is attached from point A to point B. And, you know, a bone is just a fixed point. There's only so many directions that can go. And that's basically dependent upon the detail of the muscle fibers and the direction of the muscle fibers. So I reconstructed in my own way for myself, completely out of the context of current day education, yeah. exactly how biomechanics works by dissecting every single muscle and its action on the body. What exact action can this one muscle have on the bones? How does this one, you know, how does a bicep move, right? Your, you know, ulna and your radius. Yeah. How, how does it get it to do that? How, how is it, you know, what, what's all the limitations? What's the maximum range here and here? And then how is that complemented by other muscles? And so I did the same thing with the nervous system. I did the same thing with the lymphatic system. I did the same thing with as much as I could find out about the brain. And that's endless. Yeah. Never going to end. You know, all of it is never going to end. And so for the naysayers, I would just say that it, I mean, I really don't care about naysayers because I got a successful business. That's that's the (laughs) thing. But when it comes to it, it's just like, I care about the naysayers simply because that means that there's people out there that don't believe that there's a possibility for, for healing the impossible. Yeah. And, and so for that, I say, you know, leave education behind and go and have your own experiences at least at the very, at the very least, you know, you don't got to leave anything behind, but at the very least get curious enough that maybe just maybe there's something else out there that can have a massive effect. And it can only improve your skills, you know, whoever this may be, right? Yeah, because you got people that are masters at their craft, but maybe from the textbook standpoint, which is good, but, like, there's, to me, there's a limit of that. Right. I think having that whole approach and the whole the holistic understanding of, one, experience, but, two, you know, the spiritual aspect and the emotional aspect and, and how this all ties in together is the mm-hmm. way to be the ultimate healer and ultimately be healed as right. much as possible. Right. Yeah. And so you're trying, you're trying to tie all that in together and you've done well with it. I mean, I, <clears throat> I will say, I mean, that's kind of, it's hard for me to explain what you do to people. Cause I recommend you all the time and you know, they're like, well, I go to this person and then it, you know, they do this profession. Right. And they did this thing for a little bit and then y'all stopped going and it just came back, you know, but I noticed they like, one thing I find is like, there's no fix, you mm-hmm. know, it's just they have to go back, you know, almost like a subscription to get this problem just tolerated, mm-hmm. but they never actually heal it. So, and I'm like, man, Jesse will do whatever he can to actually help you progress and heal past this to where you don't have to come back to him for this specific thing. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of like this. How I like to put it to people. And I talk you up, dude. So naysayers, don't you dare. And, you know, come come on. You know, I'll... One of, one of the biggest things about the practice, you know, I'm training, uh, you know, we have a, our apprentice, Aaron, and you know, I have a soon-to-be apprentice coming on, um, you know, probably later next year. And the, 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 the premise has to be that you can't be dogmatic towards any way of thinking. Yeah. And so it's, it's constant, 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 constant trial and error. If it's constant trial and error, there's constant learning. So, so when, you know, it, it doesn't matter how many shoulders I fixed, I fixed probably well over, you know, 1500 shoulders. Damn. And when you, yeah, I've crossed my 17,000 hour mark. It's, it's wild. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you look at, you know, aspects like this, then it's, uh, it's never going to be the same no matter what, because every person's different. Every personality and nervous system is, is unique. So when someone comes in and I'm trying to, you know, open it up, you know, I have, my way about doing things. I have a process of taking care of all the muscle groups. And so I'm, I'm taking care of the whole shoulder, not just one. Yeah. And so as I'm moving through it, this is part of my modality too, is the organization of it. It's the only thing I'm organized in my life. I promise. <laughs> um, but I have a very strict organization of how I approach muscle groups because I'm, I'm looking to 
move in a in a pattern that is um, basically kind of the opposite of what's going on. So if there's like a real big tightness over here, I'm looking to move from the least tight to the most tight, yeah. typically. And that's just because I'm creating space for the most damage. A lot of times the things that are the most tight are actually the most, you know, typically the most damaged, the, the most problematic. I'm not going to say always. Again, sometimes it depends. But generally speaking, I, I have this pattern that I'm, I'm, I'm working towards. So not just the modality of exactly what I'm doing in the moment, but then the, the setup is super important in order to create this space in the body. That's one way that was really good about me explaining how the healing works and, and how it actually is happening at the end of the day is that space gets created. Yeah. Because the only reason that there's a problem is because there's too much constriction. If there's too much constriction, the blood flow is not working. The lymphatic system is not working. The nervous system is not working well. It's just not getting, you know, if the nervous system is not working well, it's not getting the right information. So it can't respond effectively. Mm. If the lymphatic system is not working well, the trash isn't going to take it out. And if the trash doesn't get taken out, then it's just like, you know, things fester. Yeah. Right. And then if the blood flow is not working well, if there's constriction there, uh, then, you know, there's no nutrients, there's no, uh, new information. And at some point, depending upon their restriction, nobody really thinks that that's also the carrier of DNA. Yeah. That's also, um, when things get isolated for so long, they actually get completely off sync and off track. And, and that resyncing can be hell to come yeah. back to. And it, it, it takes more than what most people think, but unlocking all these things through space in the body is not just fixing the one problem, the one nerve it's, it's fixing, um, the entire area to, like I said, to, to resync things, to get the entire area corresponding well so that there's more blood flow, there's more range of motion, and all these things play a part in the actual end of day healing. I can make you feel good for 20 seconds, you know, just by pressing on that nerve. Yeah. I can maybe f make it feel good for three days by taking care of the one area that you're talking about. But I can also, but to in order to fix it, I have to trail all the way from the tightest to the least tight and then work my way back from the least tight to the tightest. Mm. And I'm trying, that might not just be, you know, that might not just be the shoulder that might be all the way from the impingement that you have in the shoulder, traveling across the chest, traveling down through the rib cage and into the obliques, into the opposite opposing hip yeah, down and around through the glutes and down the hamstrings and down into the calf and to the ankle problem that you had 20 years ago. Damn. You know, and it's nuts. It's a whole journey. Yeah. It's a journey. Yeah. So it's not a one-stop shop. Yeah, you're here to work on people, you know, not, I'm not saying long-term, but yeah, mm -hmm. like actually fix the problem and it's going to take a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Now, now we understand what the Milsom Medic does, the modalities, all the different things to a degree, <laughs> you know, um, as, you, as, as much as we can wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, at the end of the day, it's come experience it for yourself. Yeah. So check them out guys. Where can, where real quick, where can people find you? Here at Relentless Pursuit Headquarters. Yeah, but yeah. online. Like, where do they yeah. search? Did you search um, I think it's uh, the, the Muscle Medic TN, uh, dot com, or you can do, um, or you can just search us, you know, uh, the Muscle Medic in Murfreesboro, and um, you can find, you know, our location and uh, that. Uh, but most people, how, how we operate is we communicate through Instagram. So uh, just the underscore muscle underscore medic uh, Instagram will you know, that's, that's bring it up. We have Anna and, um, eventually I want to talk about Anna cause she needs a shout out, but, um, yeah, we, we have my awesome assistant that takes care of a lot of things and she's very quick at messaging people back. She's, um, you know, really on the fly with that stuff. It's been great. And, um, but yeah, any conversation anybody needs or wants to get a video consult, you know, we're here for it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We'll dive into the muscle medic journey a little bit. Take us down that. Okay. Um, so kind of like I've touched on in a few episodes, you know, I was, you know, it all kind of began with me being in a really bad situation. Um, I've had a few, well, I've had many, many really bad situations that I've had to seek out help. And most of that, especially within the medical system, was not available. Or it got chalked up really fast to there's nothing we can do or we've done as much as we can. There's just no hope, you know, shit yeah. like that. And that was really, you know, I don't know. I, I think I was probably pretty different because it was like a moment of disheartening, but even a greater moment of anger, like mm -hmm. bullshit, you know? And I think that 
anger carried a lot of my business in the beginning. And, um, that anger was a really big motivation and drive for me. And I'm proud to say that I'm finally not operating out of anger anymore. I'm operating out of this, you know, opportunity, positivity, and, and, and what I'm out of curiosity of what can I do? You know, yeah. what, what can I achieve? But in the beginning, that's what made such a, I mean, absolute aggressive manhunt for information. Yeah. And I, I know I was dissecting everything. I went through several books, several people, and I've always been, one thing I've always been really good at is sourcing out information based on people's levels of credibility. Yeah. And even that evolved over time because what I'd do is I'd find, you know, I, I'd go through people, 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 and it was like, if they said a couple of things that were just like that, I don't jab with that. That's definitely not wrong. It's just, that doesn't sound congruent to science. It doesn't sound congruent to what I've experienced, especially. Yeah. So, and usually at that point I'm like done with people. Mm-hmm. I've, I've eased up on that. And now I, I source out information by listening to several different people, trying to find the best gurus that I can, but even then not binding to who they are or what they go for. They're probably going to say something wrong at, at one point, just like I'm probably going to say something wrong at one point and yeah. correct myself later. Yeah. But generally speaking, like I collect massive amounts of information and then based on my attempts and experimentation, you know, that's where I, you know, that that's how it began is like I, I collected all this information and I experimented and then I found what worked and then repeat, repeat, repeat. It's all mm-hmm. been based on repetition. So it got started like that in personal training, actually, because before I could do anything while I was being told I was a personal trainer while I was being told none of this could happen. And even though I was down, I still had a responsibility to my clients to keep them healthy, keep them going. And it was actually the first time I started experiencing, like, maybe I don't want to be a trainer because I can't train. It was kind of weird. Yeah. And um, it was um, it was very interesting across the board to find out what drives me and find out where to go. And I was just looking for something different. I didn't really want to do the training thing anymore. I enjoyed it for the science, just like I enjoyed getting into bodybuilding at the time for the science. I was training with Marsoc in the Marine Corps and I was really enjoying understanding like different training modalities, you know, just the art of perseverance in general, just the art of spirit, just the art of willpower, you know, how yeah. it, how it actually affects the body. And, um, as I was going down this journey, eventually, you know, I get out of the Marine Corps and dealing with severe injuries. Uh, I, I had a, um, ankle that was drastically injured, you know, in training. Uh, I injured my back actually very early, but I just kind of weathered it. It was weatherable. It was functional. <laughs> Should I say? Yeah. There's pain, but it worked, yeah. you know? And so it wasn't something drastic yet, but my ankle actually got to the point to where it was like, this thing doesn't work anymore. This is a problem. Mm. And, and, um, you know, had a big accident and then had to, um, have surgery on it. And well, went, went to physical therapy and it was like, what they were doing was the best it was going to get. And I kept hearing over and over again, like, dude, you're not going to run again. And it sucked because basically I lost all hope for ever continuing the training for, for Marsoc and the Marine Corps. And, I was just, I was really down. Yeah. And on top of that, in the Marine Corps, it's like, you know, if you're hurt whatsoever, ah, you're bullshitting, you're malingering, this and that. Like, you know, I already wasn't training with, uh, I wasn't training or or really going to work because I had, I ain't gonna lie, I did have special privileges. It was kind of ridiculous how much special privilege I had to go train with these guys. Like, I mean, they would just let me off work at like 930 and be like, yeah, go go train if this is what you want to do. My first sergeant was really cool. First sergeant all red. He was a shit. And um, he was like, dude, whatever you need to do to get this done and follow this dream, do it. And that was so fucking cool. Yeah. But like a lot of the guys that I worked with, like, you know, my, my company was cool, but just in general, a lot of the people that I was working and associating with, like, I didn't know a damn thing about like my actual MOS. Like yeah, I was, yeah. I was good at it. I wasn't mediocre by any means, and I was a good, um, you know, uh, corporal and a good sergeant when I, when I was there. But it it sucked because I was falling into this category of like, you know, training really going in this direction. And then when I got hurt, it was like, well, you're useless. Yeah. And 
having everybody in the Marine Corps basically saying I'm useless, having uh, all the, you know, doctors basically saying that there's nothing that can be done, like lost all hope. Went yeah. down my first major, major, major mental health spiral. Kind of shattered was, your dreams. Shattered my dreams. Yeah. Um, and I was married, and as the mental health declined, I found that there was no support there as well. And so it was like just like this massive pit of despair that eventually – uh, led to me getting medically separated out of the Marine Corps a week after actually getting into a place out of the Marine Corps, I got divorced and I was in this pit of absolute misery that was like, I got to get out of this. Mm. And I decided to train in any way I could train in any way possible. And the only thing that was available at that time, because running was so important at that point, the only thing that was available for the first time was strength. And I found that strength actually improved my back. Strength actually was improving my legs. Um, there, It was improving my ability to go in the uh, appropriate direction, even though, like, I mean, it was years before I could run again. It was actually like, um, it even to this day, I can't run very long. But yeah. um, but at the same time, it just stops, it stops working appropriately, which sucks. Yeah. But the strength, it, it wasn't something that was so hindering because it wasn't long duration. It wasn't like weathering the ligaments and stuff. So, um, you know, I started going down this journey of strength. I, I made a really good friend in, in the Marine Corps that actually moved to Chattanooga with me. Um, well, he, he moved on his own accord, but we decided to go to the same school. And he got me in a strongman. Strongman was one of the biggest portions of this because he was a corpsman and the whole time you're doing strongman. I mean, you're always getting messed up. You're always fucked up. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, there is no like go see someone in strongman. It's kind of funny. Just about every strongman guy I know is really good at taking care of themselves and working on themselves. Yeah. Uh, you have to have some knowledge of that because of how much brutal shit that you're doing. I mean, we usually start, start and end every session with some kind of uh, soft tissue mobility, whether we're rolling the fucking stones on our quads as a group or some stupid shit like that, <laughs> or we're, you know, we're just using gym equipment to implement, to break up tissues. Like it's constant yeah. and it's a group effort too. Like it's understood as a group, which is really nice. This was like the all inspiring thing to where it was like in this group, there was nobody that thought like, no, dude, you messed that up. And someone, like, if you really mess yourself up and you're like, ah, oh, and, you know, you start going into despair and you're like, fuck, I can't do this anymore. You know, whatever. There's always someone there in these groups that are like, nah, dude, check this out. Try show this. you a way around it. Yeah. And whether it was like some duct tape level shit or it was some seriously like, I mean, I threw my hip out hardcore in a competition one time and I had this old dude. He's like, come here. And he just like presses on my hip in the right way. And it's like, while I'm standing up, clicks my hip back in. And he's like, there you go. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, <laughs> Done so, that before. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I'm like, you know, I'm starting to meet wizards here, you know? Yeah. And I'm starting to meet the, and like these dudes are like 50 and 60, still doing strongman. Of course they're wizards. Yeah. Time, they know, you know? something. They, yeah. They, they know how to keep going, you know? And, um, and that was so much experience for me. That was, and, and you know, Obviously, being in that group, you know, you start doing it to other people. And we're all working on each other. Or at least that was what my experience with Strongman was like. Yeah. And at this time, I was also going to school in Chattanooga for physical therapy. I actually did not finish that. And um, through living with several terrible roommates, um, several iterations, uh, terrible exes, uh, terrible, you know, drug heads and everything, I finally made the decision to move with a buddy that, had just moved out of Chattanooga to Lebanon, just totally on a whim, dropped everything I was doing. I had a girl that I was dating that was actually in Illinois that decided on a whim to move with me. And a lot going on. Yeah. So we moved into my buddy's house, right? He just got divorced. Crazy shit. And I'm absolutely in a, in a place where it's like, there's no plans. There's no nothing. Like this is absolutely random. Fuck it. Like throw everything away. Let's do this. <laughs> And within, uh, like two weeks of being there, I just so happened to roll by like a massage studio and so I rolled by MBI in, um, in Nashville, just like driving around Nashville on my first kind of time, like checking everything out. And I drive by and I'm like, fuck it. I'm going in there. And I talked to him and they're like, yeah, we actually got a course that's starting in like, uh, two weeks or a month or something like that. And I joined the course. And at this point, like I went through strongman, went through far enough to where, it was good, but then 
um, I had a really big experience with destroying my back as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I was getting really good at deadlifting and, um, you know, up into the 700s and then, um, you know, shattered my back, done, over yeah. with. And so as, as I started this school, I started this school from a completely crippled position. Um, the story is a little jumbled up, but um, the move was also around at the same time right before the move and right before I dropped everything, like I got hurt like majorly to the point to where it was like, you know, the shit wasn't working anymore. Yeah. And so it's that same back injury from the past, right? It yeah. just, just, uh, well, I mean, it was like, it was like done for it. It was like, it was the back injury. And then it was like, it was like this time that it got injured, there was no support cushioning around it. it yeah. Was all, it, it all collapsed. And it was like, uh. all it was like, Cause like when I got the MRI, the sacroiliac ligaments were fucked. The discs were completely flattened. It was bad. And like, I was truly having a hard time, like walking around. I, you know, again, I had like three weight belts, you know, strapped around me. God. Um, and, um, it, it was, it was wild. And I went through the whole massage school, like, you know, a, um, like a, like a project, like, you know, they were using me as a project cause I was so injured, but also, you know, I don't even know why they let me do it, but <laughs> I was, I, I was just bent over the whole time. Like I had to use the table to get around and my first like six months to a year uh, of working was like me using the room. I had a small room in the gym that I set up and the table to hobble around on and people just came and saw this crippled dude that would fix you. It was crazy. <laughs> and, and so, um, by the middle of massage school, I had a fallen out with the guy that I moved in with and my ex you know, she had enough of that place. So she went back to Illinois and, um, that was pretty much it for us. And the falling out that I had, eventually he got too far into, you know, his own stuff. He was still healing from a lot of his shit. We're cool now, but I had to leave and I just like left abruptly. Yeah. So I leave, I get in a camper and, uh, me and my dad find this like $500 camper or maybe a thousand or something like that. And we put like 500 to 750 in it and remodel it and basically remodel it just so it's waterproof and so it doesn't have running water um it doesn't like all the all the lines are fucked so we strip out the bathroom we strip out you know any kind of sewage stuff any water stuff and it's basically a shed with um you know barely enough electricity to run like i could run like the ac and i had to shut off the ac to run the microwave and like it was just like it was it was wild it was livable yeah it was livable yeah and we find this random ass place here, actually in Murfreesboro, um, on this uh, woman's lot, like kind of like in her backyard, but it's like in the middle of the woods. You know, it's like often, you know, BFE. And I got like one extension cord that's like a hundred foot extension cord going from her light pole to, you know, my camper. And I lived in that thing for about a year. And um, I finished school in that thing, and I started my business in that thing. And within about three months of, um, of actually starting up my business, having my license and having the first ability to get some money, like I actually was out of there really quickly. Like nice. I, I was so hell bent on getting out of like, I mean, we're talking winters. It was 18 degrees in that motherfucker. Me and my yeah. dog, me and my dog were surviving by electric blankets and shit. And, um, in the summer, I mean, you know, it's, it's just you know, get used to windows open, flies everywhere, 80, 80 90 degrees, no matter what. It was, it was brutal. And it was, like, it was like a pressure cooker. It was humbling. Yeah, very humbling. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so I, you know, this was the major beginning of my, like, extreme hustle mentality because I already had a hustle mentality for personal training. It was kind of natural, just like, hey, you need some help? <laughs> and I'm at the gym, and – I'm so excited to like actually be able to heal people, change shit. And I'm so curious about what I can do. And so within the powerlifting community, I was constantly going around and like, I mean, I would just grab people that were hurting or moving around. I was like, Hey, why don't you lay down on the bench? And they'd be like, you know, I wouldn't even know them. I'd be like, lay down on the bench. Let me fix that. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? And some other dude that, you know, does know that guy there. He's like, trust me, just lay down. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's like, you know, with it everybody's cool with it and it's so it's so badass because like i gained trust really quick because I, I mean i was doing this shit for free for a long time and so this gym here in olympus i gotta give a lot of credits to sean because like for me when i right before i graduated i wanted to practice and i was like sean you know he had a back room that was like just basically filled with extra pieces and trash and everything i was like hey man he's a gym owner here at olympus and i was like if would you let me clean that room out and just so i can practice and he's like sure 
Yeah, I mean, we had mountains of trash in there. And, like, here's my crippled ass, like, hauling shit out. And luckily I had a couple people, like, that were willing to help me, but hauled all that shit out, um, threw all that, you know, threw most of the shit away and then stored all the usable stuff in, like, a closet and, um, you know, just bare concrete walls and, and, and floor and a shitty roof. And I just moved my table and, and a, a desk in there with all my, you know, little tools that I had at that point and just started working on people. I just show nice. up and, you know, I was making kind of preemptive appointments. It was all free, but it was really cool because now I could just like pull people in the back room. And I made a habit of that that was totally free way before I ever even started the business. That was like three months before. And so when I finally got my license, I just I opened up shop. Yeah. And then, you know, I painted, painted everything black, <laughs> painted the floors back, black, ordered black ceiling tiles, walls black, everything, put up my posters and started, went to town, got the, you know, uh, license for the building. And it was, I mean, it was just like, holy shit. I, I came to see you while you were there. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> nice. Did good catch it. The On the last leg. All right. I'll fuck with it later. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I got some work done by you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, At that space. And that's how, how we became friends. Yeah. And it's so funny, too, because, like, I don't know what transition you made, but I remember my first impression, like, I wasn't nearly as, like, healthy as I am now, you know, in, in my head. And, you know, I definitely had some judgment problems and everything. I was stuck at my own ass. I was arrogant. But I remember seeing that you booked with me, and then I, like, looked you up on Instagram. I was like, who's this guy, you know? Cause like it was very random and I was at that point, like anybody who booked with me, I was like, I'd search them. And so I could like kind of prepare myself for when they came in, you know, just not like totally surprised. Yeah. And, um, and I remember like looking at you and I remember seeing you with like your long hair and a suit and like your tattoos and other thing. I was like, the fuck is this guy? <laughs> you know? And not yeah. like a, I, I was, I was kind of twisted. I was like, all right, either he's going to be a douche or he's gonna be really cool. Thanks. And uh, you were really cool. And, <laughs> and we like it was so funny because it was so child. Like looking back, that interaction was so childish. Yeah. Because we were just like, like I don't know, just started working, and you're like, yeah, I really like this. I like me too. And we started <laughs> talking about like Skyrim and then Lord of the Rings, and like I like this and I like this, and they're like, but we're best friends. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, was it, like, was like, it was like that. It was quick. quick. Yeah, it was fucking quick. Fucking dope. And um, and then you know we started hanging out and everything. So yeah, but. Um, I was in that room and, um, that, that room really gave me the beginning of my business. Then fucking, you know, COVID hit and they basically like shut everything down. Yeah. And, um, well, no, no, back up, rewind. I had a problem with the, um, the gym owner for a while because he had to go away for reasons and, um, somebody else was left running it and it was like really really hampering my business like they were really hassling my clients you already had to walk i mean it was a huge gym that, you know olympus is a yeah. massive gym i work all the way worked all the way back in the dungeon and you had to walk in you had to walk all the way back through the gym through this massive hallway and then figure out where i'm at i have no signage <laughs> usually and um i like being kind of you know obscure and you know isolated so you know, they already had to do that. They didn't need somebody like hassling them when they walked in the door. Yeah. And then like negotiations with pricing and all kinds of stuff. Like as soon as he was out, like, you know, this new person was uh, really giving me some shit. Yeah. And I was like, no, fuck it. I don't need this. And uh, I started looking for other places, found a chiropractic place, and um, then um, moved in with Dr. Key. That was really cool. And then I worked there for quite a long time and um gave me a key let me make my business my own didn't have them sweet black walls anymore but you know i had my own room and i could work whatever hours i wanted and um i mean dude i was like pulling 12 hour days there i was yeah. like hustle monkey in it it was crazy dude it was that was like the hardest i have ever worked and on the weekend still going to like different gyms that would open up and they would collect like eight to 10 people. And I just worked through them back to back, whatever they needed yeah. come back Monday, you know, start working again. It was nuts. Yeah. And <clears throat> it was, it was amazing. But that was when I started having my spiritual experiences of having panic attacks and having, 
I was starting to get, uh, you know, I didn't know what overwhelmed was. I wasn't really focused on the nervous system in a, in a way that was a personality and that um, may be overworked and overcharged and, and problematic. I wasn't really focused on the connection of the fact that I'm taking on all this energy from everyone. Yeah. Because I did know that I was having a harder and harder and harder and harder time the longer I kept going. And eventually it was like, okay, you know, I, I was completely unregulated and did unregulated things. And, you know, I would take, I was like, you know what, fuck it sharply two weeks break sorry guys and i would take that break and then freak out about money and be sharply like i'm open and all these hours and it was like it was like that for almost like a year and a half yeah i'm just like but anyway covid happened went on the road started hustling there like you know couldn't work in any any location they were so so strict and so shitty about it and and i didn't i hate restrictions i've always hated any level of oppression so I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm doing my own thing. And I just started traveling all around Tennessee on the road, had all my equipment in my truck and just went to people's houses, set up, did it like that. Yeah, I and, remember that. And, um, you know, it was what it was. It was really cool. And, um, you know, I got to do it. And then instead of coming back to the chiropractic place, I actually ended up going to uh, Olympus because the old owner was back. And um, I finished out like another year and a half there Yeah. before I came here. Yeah. And, and so, you know, that there was a lot of major growing pains with this business that like at the time, you know, even though it was like inconveniencing, that's all I felt it was. It was like inconveniencing. I was like, just, I was in that hustle mindset of like, you know, what, let's just go. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's not going to do itself. So whatever, we got to go do it. And so, um, then I move here at some point, um, like March of twenty. 20- two yeah march of yeah. yeah yeah jesus it's been a while i know right um and so it's almost two years so i um i move here and i uh oh wait it would have been march 23 fuck i don't know sometime i don't know anything man i should you know, it <laughs> yeah. feels like i should know right <laughs> yeah i mean but, same here but um but you know i i finally finally get to this location and I'm not gonna lie, man. Like, at first, I kind of like had my ups and downs with like, you know, small things like the room and that and this. But <clears throat> what I had gone through so much shit at that point, and the move was closely. No, it was 23 because yeah, uh, it was 23. Yeah, it was 23 because, yep. um, yeah, with the move, I was also going through a massive after effect of my biggest ayahuasca trip. I moved here and I was going through such a, a, a massive shockwave of things. And just like any move, you know, um, that was probably this, this move here was probably the hardest on me and my business and the muscle medic because it had already gone through so much shit. But like I said, I, I, I went through, uh, this massive ayahuasca experience right before I came here. Um, that led me into having a deeper look and understanding of my relationship and my relationship was going so downhill and, I was, you know, it it was me understanding that I was in a very unfair relationship. Um, It really wasn't fair to me or her. And, you know, I needed to make better decisions. And the decisions I started trying to make that were more mature led ultimately led to the downfall and destruction of it. And, you know, a lot of aggression in the relationship. And, um, you know, it just obliterated itself. And then took on the responsibility of moving here. And in that first bit of time being here, this was the first bit of silence that I had actually ever gotten in the business. Yeah. And that silence was drowning. I mean, it was, it was hard, like really hard, miserable. Cause now, cause I'm used to being in the gym and everybody would constantly come up and talk to me. If I didn't have, you know, I'd be bullshit with people. I'd be pulling people in. It was natural marketing and all kinds of stuff. But now like, if there was any lulls, I mean, the silence was so deafening here and it was, it was wild because it gave me this grand ability to reflect that I desperately, desperately needed. See? And yeah, no, I mean, I'm just, I figured you'd like this part because like, seriously, it was a, this has been the coming here with the ugly healing journey for me because I, really needed to finally be quiet. I really needed to be isolated. I needed to be out of a relationship. I needed to be, I needed to 
not be focused on all of the chaos and stuff that I was focused on because a lot of the chaos was, or a lot of the stuff was chaotic preoccupation. It was just keeping me busy. Yeah. And it was all distracting. Yeah. You know, it, for, it kept you away from that internal yeah. reflection. And so it was really a godsend, but it also, you know, it finally allowed me to start my integration and, and process of that ayahuasca experience because I mean, that's just forever going to be the most life changing thing I've ever experienced. And it, the, the thing is that I, I, I think I realized once I got here, I like, I didn't really start to integrate any of it because after I got here, you know, me and, uh, me and Casey, uh, broke up and then it was, uh, finally that time to start work. Yeah. Uh, internal work. Yeah. And, um, you know, I did with the silence I started building it out. I started, you know, the shop started picking up. I started getting new toys, yeah. started getting better things. And, you know, it went through this decompression process, which is really interesting for the business because I, I really do take pride and interest in my business for the simple fact that it's different than anybody else's business that I've ever seen. Even other massage therapist business. I don't even like the word massage therapist. I often say like, I'm not, I'm a manual therapist or just, I don't know, man, I'm just something entirely, I'm an alien. Yeah. So when it comes to like what this is, it's operated so differently because it was such a big walk with like God, the universe, however you want to say it. It was such a big, like, dude, dude, you're good. You're safe now. Let go. And that's what this place really was for me. It was like, you're safe now. Let go. Yeah. And, and as I let go, I started, it was like every bit of let go, I found a problem. Every bit of let go, <laughs> I found more problems. And it was like, there was this like little kid in me that was like really aggressive. And then just like letting it go. And then, you know, really aggressive. Okay. I see that I'm aggressive and let go. Okay. Really sad. I see that I'm sad. Let go. And it was like, just this massive upheaval of shit finally coming here that I was like, dude, I have been balls to the wall since mm -hmm. I started my business and I've been operating off of aggression and survival anger. I've been off operating off of pure upset. I had such a chip on my shoulder because everybody else fucking sucked. You know, the whole medical system failed me. The whole medical, I've heard at this point, I've heard thousands of stories from my clients about how the medical system failed them. That was just more fuel to the anger. Yeah. And, and so it was like, it finally started to slow down. And the funny part is up until recently, three months ago, I decided I, I eventually went out to California and saw Jimmy bluff. Um, I, I, I traveled around, you know, my whole career as a muscle medic, finding all these people, but probably one of the most pivotal people that I've went to see is Jimmy bluff because yeah. he was just like me, just like the 40 year old version of me. <laughs> and he had so much wisdom. He was so wise. He, he knew so much shit. And he really changed my perspective on all this. And he, you know, for, first he, he brought up the top end aspect of things. He brought up, you know, like what you do is not work, it's art. Yeah. And that changed my perspective drastically. So like, you know, people come in like as art projects now. People come in for the art of healing, not just, you know, this one little thing to get fixed yeah. and try. Um, and so me looking at things as an art form, you know, I went out there, got a lot of good education, you know, made good connection and then came back and it was like, yet again, everything kind of started falling apart. I started falling apart and I started reflecting on everything. And that's when I started realizing, I was like, dude, I, I like exactly what I just said. Like I've just been operating out of anger and frustration and, and, uh, also just hurt for a long time. And so three months ago, was the first time that I was like, you know what? I'm mentally, spiritually, emotionally, I'm letting it go. I'm letting the business go for the first time. And it was such a big leap of faith because I mean, we didn't put, we haven't put anything out there even since like we haven't, we, I haven't got back to the train, but I let the business go because we stopped marketing. We stopped, you know, doing any kind of emails, anything like I just took a break. I've like for the last three months, I've, I've came into work consistently the same way. There has been absolutely no change in people coming in and no change in the traffic, no change in staying booked. I stay booked. There is no spaces usually yeah. there's like maybe one or two spaces a month that are usually supposed to be booked that aren't booked. But every week that I come in has been booked and I have done nothing but go home and chill and go to the gym and relax and sit down and play video games. 
you know? And, and, but it was, it's been like the first time since I started the business. Yeah. You know, I've fucked up here and there and in general, like, you know, here, here on a weekend or so, but generally speaking, it's been the first time that I've had my own business as an entrepreneur and been able to actually sit and chill and relax and, and just constantly like in the beginning, it was like just this practice of faith to like, just let it go because you have to. And it was, it's been mind blowing. Like the entire experience of the muscle medic has been mind blowing because it's been this gift from the very start Yeah, that I can say that I took full responsibility for seeing a vision and seeing it so far down deep in the trenches that this is what I need. This is what people need. And then I pulled it up from like hell's gate. Yeah. And like I rose it into like the kingdom that it is now. Yeah. And it's so cool. Cause like, I mean, dude, our email list is like, I don't know, like 1800 people. That's sick. And that's just the people who have signed up. That's just the people who booked with like, like that's not including all the random ass people that I've just ever, jumped on board. Yeah. That just jumped on board that just came in and just like said, Hey, like way before we had like a system. Yeah. You know, that's, that's since I made this system. And so, and it's, 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 it's wild, wild that we have got this far. And I say we, because, you know, at, I can't remember exactly when, but it's been about two, two and a half, maybe three years now that I've had Anna and Anna has been such a game changing thing. And I have to include her in here because she is just as much as part of the muscle medic as I am. And she's yeah. my assistant and I could never have asked for a better person to, um, support me. And she's like a little sister to me. She literally just shows up when she needs to. She, she just, she just does the thing. There's so many things that, you know, probably would have fallen through with me that she has just caught. Yeah. It's been so nice that like, cause at some point when it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you realize like, fuck, I can't, I can't do this. Long. Yeah. And like, how do I handle all of these people? Like I already have you know, now, now I have six people. I used to have 12 to 16 people coming in a day. And so now I got maximum, maximum six people, but usually somewhere between four to six. So now I have these people coming through and it's really nice and really quiet, but how do you even go from like taking all your attention on these six people and you got like 20 texts and you got like 20 Instagram messages? How do you how do you do that alone? Yeah. Right. You're going to fuck it up. Like it was just the honest truth. Yeah. And so Anna has been a godsend dude, because she is always on top of it. I don't like if there has been thing, if there's, if there's things that fall through the cracks, she's already taken care of it. That's killer dude. And it's, it's wild because like I needed that. Cause like when she came on board, you know, I kind of explained to her what I wanted. I was like, I need some help organizing and I need someone to be like the messenger, like front head. Because mm-hmm. I do need to come into work and give all of my focus to these people. Mm-hmm. Because oftentimes at the end of the day, I'm so fucking overwhelmed. And so, like, you know, I go through all this shit. I hear some of the craziest fucking stories of all time, some heartbreaking shit, some, and, and a lot very much like my story of like how the medical system has completely failed them and they don't know what to do. Yeah. And, you know, okay, cool. And, and like for the last five years, I've been like, sure, I'll take that responsibility. Yeah. And I've done it successfully. And up until these last three months has been the first time that I've actually reflected wholeheartedly. Like, I mean, you know, I said that with a chip on my shoulder before, but now I've reflected wholeheartedly be like, holy fuck, I did that. <laughs> holy fuck. You know, like, look at you. well, not just, no, not look at me and just like, holy fuck, that's heavy, dude. Yeah. Like, like, like much more in a sense of like, when the fuck did you get the balls to do that? <laughs> You should still pat yourself on the back though, because you stuck with it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I do, but you know, at, at the at the end of the day, it's just like it, it's a it's a mind fuck for me because like I, finally reflecting on it, and it was like, dude, not not only is it heavy, but like also like it's crazy to think that like instead of me going to jail or because I mean I've crossed so many fucking boundaries with my business because like I've looked at it very much like a hero right if you need help you're getting fucking help I don't give a fuck what anyone says I don't care how out of the box I am I know the way to help it let's yeah. fucking do it and then fucking you know I have doctors sending me people I have chiropractors sending me I have people literal literal doctors in this town that have reached out and been like I don't know what's going on but I know you will oh yeah and man. that fucking at the beginning of that, I overwrote that in my head. 
because my immediate thought, I totally like them saying that the whole essence of that, there was never a, <laughs> a doctor just said that sure, fucking let's do it. Maybe I would say that in a conversation, but when that happened, my first thought was like, yeah, let's get them in here. Let's check it out. Yeah. And they come in, check it out to fix it. But I never really sat with it and been like, dude, this is real. Yeah. It was something I totally overwrote in my head because the first thought was like, yeah, sure. Let's try. Yeah. And that's dri- driven the whole business. Anyway. No, dude, I think it's awesome, man. I mean, trust me, dude, recently I've had a lot of those kind of reflections too, you know, yeah. like just, I just kind of do the thing and I just focus on that. Just doing fucking things, mm-hmm. never being proud, never reflecting, never just really sitting on it and looking at the board or looking at the clients or whatever, just really just go, 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 go in the same kind of way. Right. And then things kind of just crash down for you at some point and you really mm-hmm. got to like, holy shit, you know, and I think it's a positive thing to come to and it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, relinquish the drive by any means, just looking at it all as you go forward with a different lens. Um, and dude, I, I've been, I think it's been awesome to be a part of your journey and see it. Like I've all this, all that stuff you're talking about, like a good portion of it, you know, I've been, I've been here for it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, uh, even then we had like a space where we didn't talk to for just a handful of months. And, um, but then when you came here, you know, we spoke and then seeing you take that transition and see like the stress that you had initially to now is massive, but also, you know, at the end of the day, dude, I'm, I'm fucking proud of you. I'm stoked to have you here. I mean, not, not only for the soul, one of the reasons is that like, you're one of my closest friends. So it's cool to have share this space with you, but yeah. also because I do believe in what you do and I know it's one of a kind and you know, people have to come here to get that. Yeah. So just keep fucking rocking it, dude. The that. muscle medic story is great and it's only going to get greater. Yeah. Yeah, man. So thank that, you for sharing all that though. Yeah, man. It's, um, it's cool. It's cool to actually just put it on mic, you know, it's, yeah. it's cool to put it, uh, put it out there in the general sense. Cause I think, you know, we've, we've had these other talks and we've had this other, um, you know, these podcasts and stuff that have told my story, but like, I think up until recently, like it's, it's, it, it has been kind of emotional me recognizing what's going on. Yeah. And you've been, I've just flown through it. Yeah. And just to recently, now you're able to actually put it all together. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm deeply, deeply thankful that, you know, I have friends like you that, you know, took chances and believed in me when you did. Cause like, that's like one of the first things that you did, hmm. you know? And that's one of the first things you said to me, you know? And, um, I can't tell you how many times that we've been in some dark spaces that, you know, like you said, we butt heads and shit. One of the things that prevents me from butting heads with you so much is that I always reflect on those times. Like we'd be at bodybuilding shows and I'd be losing my shit, you know? And, um, I'd start getting anxious cause I'm around a lot of people. It's so, it's so funny to talk about this because now people look at me and people come in and they see that I'm the furthest thing from this. <laughs> But it's only because I experienced this like maximum amount of like anxiety being around massive crowds, you know, and, and there you are just saying, dude, you got this. I believe in you. (laughs) And even after fucking it up and fucking your whole time up and like, there were times where, you know, we had shirts to sell and I'm over here freaking the fuck out and you have to sell shirts and take care of me and (laughs) me doing dumbass shit. And, you know, it's, it's, it's wild that you always just came back with the fact that like you believed in me. So I I don't feel that I have many close friends on my level for the simple fact that like I would have to register many different variables on that of like, you know, not trying to compare anyone. I really appreciate everyone's like, you know, love for me, but it means a lot when you got someone like you who's got the same drive, the same power, the same, you know, you know, loudness to you, the same you know, pressure, the same experiences saying it because it really fucking, it, it means it's weight and gold. Yeah. When you say it. Okay. And man. so like, I, I do have to say like, you know, I'm not just trying to kiss your ass here, but like, that's why we're always like fucking close buddies is because like, I, you know, I'm sure you feel the same way about me, but you have pulled me out of the fucking darkness a lot on this journey. Oh Yeah. So 110%, dude. I mean, that's reciprocated though. Yeah. I mean, like it, it honestly, like I see past it at times. Cause I've been in that's that place of like, you know, there's times I just, I hear what you say 
Yeah. And I shut it out because I'm like, oh, no, I'm just dealing with my shit. You know, I got to freaking keep yeah. going. But then I reflect on what Jesse said. I'm like, damn, there's some truth, yeah. a lot of truth to it, you know. And, like, you don't – it that – um. You pulled me out of the dark a lot too, man. I'm I'm extremely grateful for you, your friendship, your brotherhood. And I love you, man. Dude, we're gonna take over, bro. Yeah, dude. And, you know, I love <laughs> it's it's I've always said it, you know, we're just getting started. You know, it's it's good to recognize where we're at and like be so proud of that and like look at the successes along the way. But dude, there's so there's so much more to do. Yeah. And I'm just more excited about it. Yeah, dude. I don't think there's any, any time. Every time we talk, we're just getting started. Yeah. That's, that's the funny part. And How many times have we been getting started? <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's like, hey, we're starting just from a higher place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And recognizing that, dude. So, Jesse, man, we got to cut this out. But, dude, yeah. thank you for sharing, I mean, very in-depth with what everything you do. And hopefully, you know, we, we get some people very interested and intrigued in, to your art that you create. Because it is an art, man. You 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 put all your intention into what you do. Mm -hmm. It's more than a job. It's more than a career. It's, yeah. it's a part of you. And that's what makes it very special. And that's what makes it uh, something that's needed in this world. And, um, you know, but also sharing, being able to share the journey, you know, in, in the way you did of how you got here. Yeah. You know, of course we could go off on all the tangents. And if y'all want to hear about the, you know, the specific injuries from, you know, the, with the back and how that started and like, you know, the ayahuasca trip he's talking about, they're in these episodes, one 15 and 40, you can find all that stuff and kind of sift through, but uh, to be able to condense it all and just lead us to where you're at now, dude, it's awesome. So thanks, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Hell yeah, brother. And uh, real quick, you know, you've answered this before. What is your relentless pursuit? Cause it can shift. Yeah, no. And I, I do believe it has. And, um, you know, truly, my relentless pursuit is that, you know, really, no matter, no matter the circumstance, um, no matter the uh, weight that we may have in any situation that we have, um, that I may bring light and hope to whatever situation it is. Right on, bro. Well, you do that. I feel like that's my that's my core now. Yeah. Keep rocking it, man. You've got that shit. Oh yeah, yeah, brother. Hey, I appreciate you, Jesse. Appreciate you too, bro. Thanks for being here, bro. It's an honor to have you on here once again, but also it's just an honor to have you in my life, man. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good shit, bro. All right. Till next time. Thanks, guys.